Hi. Hey. <laughs> Hi, my name's Rachel, and this is my husband, Carlos, and today we're gonna explain Light Lark by Alex Astor to him. I'm very excited. He's really not. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't wait to hear about this book. Oh, it's a cute picture. I know. What do you What do you know about Light Lark? Nothing. Nothing at all? No, we haven't talked about it. We've never talked? I'm pretty sure we have. I think I... I don't remember the book at all. Okay. I think that I told you about it having the words Yoki thing in it. Okay. Nope. So we're just gonna dive in to make this as fast as possible. Yeah, you're on the clock. Yes. I only rented him for an hour. 30 minutes. Damn it. Okay, Light Lark. Isla Crown is our main character and she's the leader of Wildling Realm. There's several realms and then there's Light Lark, which is an island out at sea. And the Makes synopsis sense. says that it appears every hundred years, but that's not actually true because what we learn almost immediately is that it's like not just appearing, but it's like inaccessible to anybody who doesn't already live there. All right. <laughs> going great so far. It's not like in a pocket universe. It's just not acce accessible. And people do live on there year round. This whole thing is like, it's supposed to be, it's com compared to like the Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. It's not the Hunger Games at all. Okay. It's like the Hunger it's Games. It's not a bunch of kids killing each other? It's not. Nobody dies. Oh. So I don't know why it got par compared to the Hunger Games at all. So despite being the leader of Wildling Realm, Isla Crown gets locked in her room most of the time by her caretakers. Poppy, someone else, I don't remember their name, uh, whoever the fuck, because she doesn't have power or so in your room. or does she <laughs> Or does she? And like she's so supposed weak. to have powers and she doesn't. So like nobody can know that she doesn't have powers. But she gets out of her room by using her star stick. Do you remember me holding up the... Yeah. Wait. It's not. I don't know where it is. Is it the bubble wand? Oh, this could be the star stick. So this is the star stick. Uh, it is the bubble wand in the last video. So she draws a puddle of stars like the Disney Channel logo. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Isla Crown and you're, you're watching, watching Light Lark. <laughs> So she uses her star stick to get in and out, but the reason why everybody's like making fun of the star stick is because we, it's never described. We have no idea what it looks like. So you can you can make anything with star stick. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm really liking this so far. <laughs> Great. So she's about to go to the Centennial, which is the competition on Light Lark, the island. What's your cat doing? She just knows that I'm here. She just put her tail in between my toes. There's a prophecy. There's a rule. There's a there's a riddle. There's a thing. Every hundred years, because 500 years ago, the six realms were all cursed and their strengths were turned into weaknesses. And the wildlings were like the pretty people. And now they're cursed so that whoever falls in love with them, um, they have to kill or they kill. Also, they live exclusively on human hearts. Beauty is now their weakness. And whoever they fall in love with, they kill. All right. Does any of that make any sense? No clue. Yeah. Like, no, no clue what's going on right now. Mm -mm. I regret to inform you it does not get any better. You're gonna kill me? <laughs> Well, I do love you. So the sunlings, their strength was their, you know, sun. And they can't go out in the sun. Vampires? <laughs> no. <laughs> they should be the ones eating hearts. Just no vitamin D. Yeah! I don't know why the wildlings have to eat hearts. I don't, I don't honestly understand it. Where are they getting the hearts? Where are they getting the hearts? They, they can't be eating each other, right? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. From their loved one? I guess. I don't know. The, the wildlings are slowly turning into trees. And oh, shit. I, yeah, and Isla's like, I have to go to save my people, even though I have no powers, but no one can know that I have no powers. So her and her caretakers, because her mom's dead and her dad, her mom killed her dad. Because yes, of course, because those are the ways. Those that are the, the, that's, this is the way. So her caretakers are like, you have to, here's the plan. You're going to go and you are going to seduce the Sunling King because he's also the King of Light Lark. It's a great plan. What's Light Lark again? The, <laughs> the island. The invisible island. The island. Okay, so it's encased in a storm. The clouds have cleared. Light Lark appears. She goes there. She portals to Light Lark with her portal. Her bubble wand, yeah, right? I know because her, her caretakers can't know about the bubble wand. So she goes through a portal oh, and she just gets there. there. I guess. But she like never uses a star stick. She has it with her. Well, I mean, if you could portal there, why does that have to be once every hundred years? I, well, it's only once every... Well, the portal doesn't work through the storm. I get, I guess. I don't, I, could she just have used the star it's stick the, to uh, get to light mark anyway? Electromagnetic interference. Mm. Yes. This is with the portal. That's nat that's yeah. that's naturally true. It says Lightlark was a shining cliffy thing. <laughs> 
Its bluffs were white as bone, and sunlight rained down in sheets of misted gold. A shining, cliffy thing. What does it look like? <laughs> a cliffy thing. <laughs> Go back, read it again. Shiny, cliffy thing in what? Shining, cliffy thing. Its bluffs were as white as bone. Sunlight rained down in sheets of misted gold. Alright. <laughs> okay, so thousands Sounds of, beautiful. It's certainly a lot of colors and cliffy things. White. It's very white. <laughs> Thousands of years ago, the sun's hot. <laughs> it's a lot of sun. The island was cut into several pieces so each realm could claim a shard. Nightshades left the island. Yeah, by the way, I forgot to tell you. It's <clears throat> Star Isle for the Starlings, Sky Isle for the Skylings, Moon Isle for the Moonlings, Sun Isle for the Sunlings, and also Nightshade. For who? <laughs> the Nightshade. Oh. <laughs> You just didn't finish. <laughs> <laughs> the nightshades left the island. So 500 years ago, when the ship popped off and the curse happened that they're trying to cure at every centennial, every hundred years, they all got a piece of the island except for the nightshades. So the island is made up of several islands. Okay. She gets to Light Lark and Grimshaw, who I call Grimdark, the love interest, immediately arrives on scene. Is he tall? He's so tall. He saves her from- He's a lot of black. He does. Cause he's, what, what, what realm is he? I don't know, Moon N Realm? Nightshade. He's from Nightshade. Would've never guessed. <laughs> So ominous. She gets a light lark, Grimshaw, Grimdark. He immediately arrives and saves her from falling into the fluffy things and dying. Mm. Yeah. So they made her kind of useless. And yeah, except saved. she, her whole life has been training for this with her caretaker, Poppy. She almost Poppy. fell into an abyss? Immediately. And she's going to fall again and another man will have to save her. Even though she's been training That's out That's just the wilderness. good storytelling. <laughs> Yeah. Princess Leia would never. Princess Leia would literally never. She says to him, have we met before? It wasn't that he knew her name. No, that was expected. It was that he pronounced it perfectly like a snake's hiss with all the letters sounded out. There was something else that Grin faltered. If we had his eyes dipped for just one moment, it wouldn't have been just once. So this is here to allude to the fact that they actually know each other and she does not remember, mm -hmm. which we don't find out until the end, which is one of my favorite tropes. I, I say, just hate it here. I was gonna say, that was pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is, except it's done really How stupid. How many S's here. are in her name? One. <laughs> So I guess it's Isla, but nobody calls you her that. You gotta really put emphasis on the S, like a snake. Isla. Yeah. yeah, I'm not calling her that. She's like, what? It couldn't have been because I have never been around men, especially men who looked like him. So tall, dark, and handsome. Because pe men are supposed to be terrified of her wildling curse because she, if anybody falls in love with her, then she has to kill them. That's the wildling curse. Mm -hmm. So not come important. to find out at the very end of the book, he erased her memory and they've been in love this whole time. She's like 19 years old. He's like a thousand years old. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so you I haven't seen that before. <laughs> um, I don't even like hanging out with 25. Five year old, so 30. <laughs> You'd think that him being a thousand years old, he would have thought of a better plan at this point. No. No. Nope. No. Let's fall in love with a 19 year old. So nightshades have powers. Everybody has powers except for Isla, Isla, whatever. Isla. Is La. Nightshades have the power to spin curses. So everyone su suspects that a Good nightshade guesses. cursed everybody and that the centennial thing, the every hundred years thing, was started by a nightshade. But that's too easy. Obviously, that's not the answer. The answer becomes really apparent because what we end up doing is we have like the hot guy, the mean girl, the best friend, and then a couple people who are completely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. we, we make it blatantly obvious who the bad guy is just by ruling out obvious things. Who's the bad guy, the mean girl? Her best friend. Oh, is that the mean girl? No, oh. that's a separate girl. Because we've been spending so much time being like, it's S S S Cleo, it's Cleo, she's bad, she's mean. Which is just trying to take our, our, it's always the person that she never says, you have to be the one betraying me. It's always that person. So it's her best friend, Celeste. Mm. I remember texting Allie and being like, I bet you it's the best friend. And when it was, I was like, wow. There's the leader of Light Lark, the king, King Candy. His name is Oro, he's the suddenly- king <laughs> Wreck it, Ralph. The leader of Light Lark is Oro, as in gold. You know, because you know you're Hispanic, so you you know what. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fluent in Latin. <laughs> Spanish. He's an origin. I don't know what that means, but if something happens is to him. Is that like their version of OGs? Like he's the OG? I 
guess. He's so. the original gangster. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if something happens to him, the king of Lightlark, Lightlark goes to shit. But at this point, I'm thinking, okay, but wouldn't who that... made up that rule? Him? Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't that break? Who made the... up that rule? Him? <laughs> like, wouldn't that break the curse? And at that point, I'm like, okay, well, if him dying will break the curse, then like, let it die, that let it seems die. Seems kind of <laughs> sus. I'm saying. Listen, so... if anything happens to me, you are all fucked, mm -hmm. and I have to be in charge. He has no personality, by the way. They usually don't. So we get to Lightlark. We meet Grimdark. We meet Azul, the Skyling leader. Uh, Azul. Yeah, of course. Blue. <laughs> Thank you for translating. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I'm here to help translate. Celeste, the starling leader, and Cleo, the moonling leader, who is the resident mean girl. So Isla goes to her room, and Celeste, the starling leader, knocks. She goes in her room, and they're like, yeah! We fooled them! They don't know that we're friends! Okay, so the point is that everybody who is now at Lightlark, everybody has to show up, or they don't. They don't have to show up, actually. There's no rule that I'm you not, actually I'm have to go. <laughs> I'm not going. If this was if this was something that I... I would just not go. That's mm -hmm. an option. They don't have to. I'm Nothing's making them know. <laughs> count, count me in on the next one, guys. The Centennial, every hundred years, Lightlark appears, except no, it doesn't. It's just accessible to host the Centennial, and it's supposed to be a deadly game that only the rulers of the Six Realms are invited to play. This is a reminder. Take Lexapro. This is a reminder. Alexa, Take stop. Damn, Alexa. It's so embarrassing. Ooh, I'm mentally ill. <laughs> Six rulers for the six realms, Moonling, Sunling, blah, 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 and Nightshade, because, you know, they have to be different and quirky. They're not like other realms. Bro, pick me of them. <laughs> It says, a call to embrace victory and ruin, baubles and blood. I have no idea what baubles they're talking about. It's the last centennial and they are being offered a chance to break the curses that each of them have. And each ruler has something to hide. Each realm's curse is uniquely wicked. Uniquely, sure, but not evenly. So like some of them <laughs> are like fated to die at 25 and some of them are just like, you can't go out in the sun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of them are obviously worse than others. You gotta kill the one you love the most. Yeah, you gotta kill, the, and you also have to eat human hearts. You can't go out at night, yeah. okay? Um, yeah, during the day. Yeah, which well, is fine. I don't want to go out. I don't. I would love like to be that. a sunling. I'm not going out in the in the day. I hate the sun. I hate night shift though. <laughs> true and to, in order to destroy the curse a ruler has to die so she's the wildling ruler a realm of temptresses cursed to kill anyone they fall in love with they are feared and despised and it says to survive isla must lie cheat and betray which wait they have to die one person has to die in order to break the curse fucking easy you would think right yeah except they make it overly complicated you can't has kill anybody person you can't kill anybody for the first like 30 days and then after that you can but then you pair up with somebody i don't really understand I'm why i'm working everybody there i would kill all five people oh, if i had shit. to break the curse hell yeah i don't know why the curse has not been broken up to this point they've oh. been doing this for 500 years i have no idea why soft i would i would have been done already okay. go back home be like i killed everybody <laughs> curse is not broken you fucking lied just to be safe i killed everybody it's extra broken now allegedly the star stick is a starling relic right except that gets retconned later and it's actually a nightshade relic which I don't mm. know how that could not be considered a plot hole because assumedly Grimm knows that she has it and her and Celeste are friends and she would have told him that she got it from Celeste and if Celeste is bad then wouldn't that have you know what I'm saying? How did Celeste get it? It's not her so I, I don't know. That's what it, yeah so like why she if, stole the star stick. If Isla had a romance with Grimdark and was hopping through puddles of stars that she made with her bubble wand and he knew that and she had gotten the star stick from Celeste wouldn't he have been like hmm that's suspicious that's weird I have so many questions so what, is, what is the importance of this star stick what do you mean when you say she's jumping between stars she's she it, all it says in the book is that she draws a puddle of stars she jumps into it and it's a portal to wherever she wants to go okay <laughs> Why stars? I don't know. I don't know if she's actually going through space in order to get places, but or if it just sounds pretty. Probably just sounds pretty. She can go wherever she wants. She can go wherever she wants. And then she doesn't use it once she gets to Lightlark mm. for no reason. She could. She's scaling walls, right, to get places and almost falling when she could just be using her Disney Channel stick to get yeah. her where she needs to go. That's all it does? Yeah. Doesn't seem important. <laughs> So they've had her train for years physically for Lightlark. They had her hang from tree branches until her arms popped out of their sockets. That was part of her training. That's not how that works. <laughs> 
<laughs> they popped him back in. I mean, is she, are her hands like bound to whatever she's holding? Because your hands will fail before your shoulders fail. I don't. I don't believe that they did that. No. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> Well, I'm not surprised. I can go hang on that door. I'm gonna <laughs> let go before my shoulder pops out. I don't have grip strength like that. You know, it shouldn't surprise me that Alex Astor never Googled, will your arms fall out of socket before your hands fail? But it, it does surprise me that not even that got Googled. As somebody that's separated their shoulder several times, yeah, <laughs> it, it takes a lot. But she was hanging for hours. Yeah, and if they, you know, have her doing it several times, you're just saying, fuck your shoulder. Now when she picks up a fork, she can her shoulder will separate because of all the, all the, all the the training. <laughs> she actually does throw throwing knives. Yeah, and her throw her shoulder out too. The guys that do rodeo. Yeah, uh, we had one that grew up uh, in the back of my neighborhood. He did rodeo stuff. Opening his tailgate to his truck, his shoulder would pop out. That's gross. Yeah, his shoulders were completely ruined from doing rodeo. Oh my god. Oh, this, this shouldn't surprise me that Alex didn't look that up. Her caretakers who trained her, obviously very poorly, set up this plan that she would seduce the king to light Lark and that that somehow would cause her to win. I don't know. But then her and Celeste, her buddy, they they concocted a separate plan and they're going to find this thing called the bond breaker which is a giant needle with a point on both sides and if both if you touch it and you bleed out all of your blood then you can lift a curse but if two people touch it then you won't die and both curses will be lifted according to Celeste. So now that seems important. Does she need to use the bubble wand to get that? I mean she doesn't. She could but she doesn't do it. It just seems so useless. It, it, it is unnecessary that it was in there at all. She was using it fucking like Uber. She was using it for fucking. It's fair. Um, I'd use it for food, my fat ass. I would use it I would use it right now if we had one. Yeah, I want pizza. We could do so many important things and immediately we're just like I don't care. <laughs> And no, I mean, we, we'd use it for good, too. It's just... First, pizza. But, like, when we're hungry, we can't, then it doesn't hurt pizza. to just not use it. Besides the use of Cliffy Thing as a description, mm -hmm. she also says things like, The sun had fallen. It was a yokey thing. Oh, you, you did tell me about this. Yeah. Lou and I have this ongoing joke that Alex Astor just needs a snack while writing, and then maybe her book would have been better because she also, like, uses yoke as, like, an ongoing theme. The sun was a red yoke smearing gold and orange and red across the sky as if desperate desperate to leave its mark i don't know about you but if i crack an egg and it's red i'm not eating that shit that sounds like blood yeah if it's, if it's red i'm not eating it i'm sorry yeah, red, don't don't mm -mm, eat it mm -mm, that's, no. a, that's a bad that's an unhealthy that, chicken that's a that's a bad one that's a bad egg they need an exorcist <laughs> an exorcist <laughs> No! <laughs> As it turns out, this is like the bad, the egg yolk thing is like foreshadowing because it comes up a few times, but it's the world's worst foreshadowing. And also there's constant weird food descriptions in a way that I think that she thought was like, wow, this is brilliant, big brain writing. I'm bringing food into it to make people understand what I'm trying to convey, but it just sounds like really silly. So she says, the island was a pastry crumbling into the sea day by day. It's like, I think you just needed some breakfast. Mm -hmm. Isla looked down at what had to be 200 feet, the water churning roughly below her, a soup ready to boil her. Was it hot? Or no. was it just waves? It's just waves. Oh. I mean, I don't think it's seafood chowder. I think she was just like, what's watery and, and, and watery? Egg drop soup. <laughs> egg drop soup. I'm surprised she did bring that up. <laughs> An egg drop soup ready to boil her. <laughs> You know what, in high school, when they, in, in like science class, when they made us recreate the cell mm -hmm. using cake? No. You didn't have the class where they made us do the cell out of cake? No. Oh my gosh, I worked so hard on that. No, we did, what did we make it out of? I don't know, like Play-Doh or something? Okay, so the, I mm -hmm. think that Alex Astor- Fucking cake, just, lucky. Just wanted to, yeah, I got to eat it after, it was great. I think that Alex Astor just like was really reminiscing about having to make the powerhouse of the cell and all the other parts <laughs> of the cell. <laughs> <laughs> All the other parts of the cell out of cake. Can't do my taxes, but I know <laughs> mitochondria is. <laughs> I think she was just like, you know, channeling that and decided that she would make Light Lark constructed like we did that cake in science class. Okay, so remember is how light she- Light Lark the mitochondria? <laughs> light Lark is the mitochondria of the cell. <laughs> what? <laughs> the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> remember how she almost died immediately upon arriving and that grimdark dude yes, had to save her? Yes, the man saved her even the though she's trained her? her whole life for this? Yes. So she almost dies again. <clears throat> she falls off of- Did her, her shoulders separate? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Judging by her training. Um, she almost dies immediately uh, because she falls off of 
her own balcony and the king of light lark saves her and at this point i'm picturing him as the <laughs> Geralt to her siri right mm -hmm. i'm picturing her as being like his mentee i was wrong and did not know that until the very end when i found out that he was a love interest all along oh this was news to me romance is dead <laughs> we get a lot of dress descriptions because isla is the only one who's allowed to wear any color while the rest of them have to wear the colors that are like sub 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 their, of their ling yeah mm -hmm. their you know starling moonling all that grim always she has can to wear, wear whatever she wants because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. she's the special she's the special. main character yes so but grim grim dark obviously he can only wear one color and that is black yes yeah and oro always has to wear gold but isla gets a whole ass wardrobe because how else would we get dress descriptions so the centennial the actual this all makes sense in the uh live action <laughs> We'll expand on that. Created by the people who made Twilight, by the way. Is that really happening? That's what she keeps saying on TikTok over oh, and over shit. and over. But I think it's just going to end up in developmental hell, just like an ember in the ashes. Why did you bring it up? Because, oh my god, because that's all she ever says on TikTok. No, you, why'd you bring up ember? Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry it's to like be to break you just want to hurt me. I'm sorry. So the centennial, the actual event that we're here for, first demonstration, because there's those, arrives. And you know, like in the Hunger Games, how the demonstrations had a point? Mm -hmm. These don't. Was there a cornucopia? <laughs> no, God, I fucking wish. Full of weapons. This is nothing like that. This does not, there's no points here. So Grimdark gets to decide the challenge this time around. And the challenge is to showcase how they do without powers, which of course, Isla is not like other girls and also already does not have powers. So she's super proficient in every weapon. Terrible shoulders. <laughs> Not according to the text. <laughs> so she beats him in combat mm -hmm. and she's sitting there in her internal monologue and she's like, his intentions are so unclear. What does he want? And for me, it was pretty obvious that he just wanted to fuck, but I guess that that was really not obvious to Isla. Shadow daddy? This book's the shadow daddy is, is... There's always one shadow daddy. There's always a shadow daddy. So she doesn't want to break the curse. She just wants to find the bond breaker, the two-sided needle to bleed all the blood out. And no one she... else knows about this needle? Apparently so. How did she find out about it? Celeste. Mm. Her BFF. So, the villain. The villain. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing is that the bond breaker is not a bond breaker. It's a... Bond maker. Yes, I think so. Anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Is Everything... Celeste a thousand do? Yes. Oh. Why are they she, hanging out with 19-year-olds? She's in disguise. Her real name is Aurora. Why are they hanging out with 19-year-olds? Well, how, how come she's question. the only 19-year-old? Because Everyone she else is, is the main old. character and it has to be relatable. <clears throat> oh, it's YA? Well, yes and no. It's supposed to be new adult, but it's not. It's young make adult. Make her a thousand. Well, uh, make her a thousand, right? It's not relatable. Is she really, Celeste really a thousand years old? Yeah. Um, what about all the other peoples? Yeah, they're, they're all like a thousand years old. Celeste is supposed to be only 25 but she's lying. She's Aurora and she's been in disguise because she's the one who started all this. She's the curse maker. Oh. Mm -hmm. Don't forget Isla's curse is that she's cursed and anyone who falls in love with her dies except like would they because she doesn't have powers but also she's supposed to eat hearts except she doesn't have to eat hearts because she doesn't have powers so if there's no actual issue with her not having to eat hearts then why is it that she can't fall in love with anyone? You know what I mean? Yeah. But she that, she got powers. And also, exactly. She gets all the drawbacks, but none of the benefits. Yeah, and also, what is love? Don't hurt. Yeah, me. I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> But like, what about like unrequited love? So what if like, what if somebody loves you, but you don't love them back? Do they still die? Yes. Okay. What about if you love your friends? They're all dead. What about your grandma? Dead. <laughs> Is it explained? No. It'd be very lonely. <laughs> Everybody well, dead. Well, good thing it doesn't work with her because then Celeste is done so. But she thinks that it does work with her. She thinks that she can never fall in love with anybody because they'll die. But if she doesn't have powers and she doesn't actually have to eat hearts, then why would she have to also subscribe to that? Joke's on you. You just walk up to Celeste. I love you. Dead. Oh, that problem, could be a, that could be a fun solved. way to break the curse. Anytime you're mad at somebody i love you <laughs> God, yes. don't make me love you they think that the bond breaker is in one of the libraries because each of the aisles has an aisle on the eye of the the aisles of the island itself has its <laughs> has its own library for some reason, except Wildling Isle because Wildling Isle is just a wasteland now. Mm -hmm. But they can't get into everybody else's libraries undetected, which begs the question, why don't they just let everybody else in on this plan? But okay. So their plan is to, I forgot about this. Their plan is to find these special gloves made of human skin. Mm -hmm. um, remember that time I, bor I borrowed your mom's vacuum and there was a whole glove inside of it? <laughs> no, it wasn't made of skin. What does that have to do with it? <laughs> Story. It's like that. It, that it's like it's a latex glove made of skin. <laughs> yeah, essentially. And it's in a vacuum. No, <laughs> I was just thinking about that. No. <laughs> 
it, it's a glow it's like a yeah like a sheer and you and it's made of human skin the way that they get it is by touching something that they get they have to get the other people's handprint so they have to touch something that the other people also touch gross <laughs> What's the point of the glove? So that they can break into the libraries oh. to look for the bond breaker. Oh. Yeah. You can tell that she was just right. They, they have like biometrics? Yes. Apparently Shit. it's DNA coded or something. With the glove you have to absorb, okay, the power from the other rulers into the skin glove and then use it to unlock the libraries. Which is like there's really no other strategy. The training, <gasps> the other competitors didn't need like to train for this at all. I don't understand why she was like physically training for anything. Like I need to, I feel like I need to read it now just to see if it's really this dumb. <laughs> if you were in this, what would you do? Would you try to find the bond breaker? I'm not touching that skin glove, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that's fair. I mean, I would, yeah, if that's gonna break the curse for two people, I'd want to do that. I would just... I, I'd be telling everybody about it. I would tell everybody. If that were real, I would tell everybody. Hey, this is why we're fucking here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's work together to find this needle thing. It doesn't really make sense that they wouldn't want it, because why would they not want the best outcome for everybody? They're all cursed. It doesn't make sense. They get nothing out of being shitty to each other. They could kill one person, or they could all break the curse by two people they're getting the curse. They're getting outsmarted by a 19-year-old, and they're a thousand. Yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense typical like with these stories but still so she's running around trying to get information but she's never trying to make a secondary plan because of course she's not she's really stupid even though she's written to be like super smart and cunning she's 19 <laughs> true she needs information to get into the moon isle library right she doesn't know like what could be waiting for her in the moon isle library she needs info about it the moon isle library is run by the bad girl the mean girl cleo you know how in video games when you have to go to a local bar and talk to like an NPC. Mm -hmm. They do that in here. <laughs> So the Ted. barkeep's name is Juniper and he's like, I only deal in secrets. But they have all the information. Yeah, which is like a great idea to like deal in secrets mm -hmm. when executed by an author who like actually knows how to write. Damn. The secret she tells Juniper is that she let Oro win in one of the demonstrations. Mm. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> cool. That she could have won, but she didn't. And he's like, okay. That's a good secret. <laughs> Thanks. That's a great secret. <laughs> Not gonna fact check at all? Yeah. And no, so, you got smoked. Yeah. You're lying. So he gives her information on how to get into the Moon Isle Library, which is that there's no guards on a certain day because of the particular curse on the moonlings. Damn. Which I feel like she could have gotten that information from literally anybody. Well, no, I mean, he's out here, like, snitching, snitching. He is and really... she's over here, like, I could have won that fight. She's barely giving him anything, and he... Yeah, it doesn't make any I'm sense. I'm not wearing any socks. <laughs> if you go on Friday, Twice it's completely empty, and they leave the door open for the cleaners. The secret <laughs> ingredient in my grandmother's cookie recipe is cinnamon. <gasps> wow. Wow, good secret. Good secret. Tomorrow at 2.14, just... <laughs> so silly. It's so silly. Celeste has a turn to choose the trial and she got this starling relic mirror that makes you go inside, face your greatest fear, and Isla scores the worst by getting out in six minutes. Everybody else faced their worst fear in less than six minutes and mm -hmm. she's terrible at it. Clearly all your training was for nothing. What's her fear? I don't even remember. Just... I think it's failing. I oh. think it's failing because all of her, you know, people are turning to trees. Mm -hmm. So remember that star stick she has? Yeah. She never uses it. Yeah, you said that. Yeah, I just want to reiterate that she could be using that to get to the libraries and doesn't. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Yeah. Okay, so one of the demonstrations, you're supposed to demonstrate your power, and obviously she does not have powers, right? So she blindfolds herself and throws a throwing star at Oro's head, the king, and knocks his crown off. Okay. That is not a demonstration of power, and nobody brings this up. So assumedly at this point, I think it's safe to assume that everyone here is stupid. I mean, there's plenty of uh, comic book characters that their power is precision. Yeah, but they know that her power has to do with plants because yeah. she's a wildling. Another task is what can you all offer? And like none of these demonstrations actually mean anything. So Cleo's like, I have ships. And Azul is like, I created a wind messaging system that is essentially Light Lark Postal Service. Mm -hmm. Oro go, made please. centralized heating because he has firepower. Isla has healing potions. And Grim says that he has nothing to offer anybody because he is the broody love yep. interest. Sounds like him. And in the end, Azul won that challenge. And my question is, won what? Do they get points? No. Why is there a contest? Everything's made up and the points don't matter. What do matter. you win if you win? You win nothing. This is going to be a great movie. <laughs>
I can't wait to see this. <laughs> Just look at everybody in the crowd. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> it would be fun if you get really high before you go. Cleo having a fleet of ships makes Isla feel like she's evil, which I don't understand why a navy would make you evil, but okay. Yeah, it's a stretch. And then Seems Oro. Like a little bit of envy. And then there's another task where they all have a secret and they it's in the bottom of their teacup and they can choose to reveal their secret or smash their teacup. And Oro reveals his secret and it's that he's dying. Aww. And if he dies, Lightlark dies too. Which mm. again, let it die, let Gosh, it die. Man, that sucks. <laughs> He picks Isla to be his partner because it's a rule that later in the game you have to pick a partner and then he reveals... The game for what? What do you win? Nothing. So they just play these games and they're like, man, we've been doing this for <laughs> so many hundreds of years. For 500 years we've been doing this. We play these games and we still have our curses. It's so weird. Let's do it again. Yeah. Let's play these games again. Mm -hmm. Is there like a prophecy somewhere that says you have to play these games? No. Who came up with the games? They they come up with them. E each time, each person gets to come up with a thing. You read this whole book? Mm -hmm. I almost quit. I'm about to quit right now. <laughs> I'm about to quit this. I'm stressed. <laughs> He tells her that there's a thing called the heart of the island, and if they find it, they will break the curse. So they start running around at night Where together. Where did you learn that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. But do you want to guess what the heart of the island actually is? Is it an egg? <laughs> no way. No way. It's a, it's a yoki thing. It's a egg. Fucking egg. It's the island egg shape. This bird keeps coming at her and she's like, what the fuck is this bird about? And then all of a sudden she's like, I figured it out. The heart of the island, the answer is an egg. Too bad you lost all the games, <laughs> idiot. You really scrambled this one. <laughs> Originally, the curse happened because someone wielded the heart, and so he's like, if we find the heart, then we can... Scramble it. <laughs> Poach it. <laughs> if we find the heart, then we can fix everything. And it felt very much like they were in like a mentor-mentee relationship to me. And because when she's not with Grimm, she's constantly going on about how hot he is. At one point, they fool around. And it felt like it set up Oro to be like this father figure and Grimdark her love interest, except apparently they were both the love interest. Mm. Like a throuple? No, like she she has to oh, choose. Oh, it's a triangle? Yeah, it's a, it's a V. Yeah. yeah. So she tells Oro, by the way, hey, I have no powers. And the next day, he switches partners to Cleo. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, I was like, that's hilarious. <laughs> by the way, I have no powers. <laughs> I'm out. He switches partners to Cleo, her enemy, right? Mm -hmm. Then Grimm gives her a magical find me necklace, which was very convenient. In case you ever get in trouble, here's this necklace, which like... Who gave it to her? Grimdark, Shadow Daddy. Then you she gets into it... <laughs> then she gets it into it with Cleo, the, the, the bad girl. And she's like, you're the bad guy. You're the evil one. And Cleo's like, you're stupid. You're a teenager. And yeah, and <laughs> freezes her. And then she wakes up and there are these people there called Vinderlings and they're going to kill her. And it turns out the Vinderlings used to be wildlings. These drop off the face of the book and never come up again. Super cool idea that we did nothing with. Oro shows up and saves her from the Vinderlings. And he's like, oh, I was just trying to help get help from Cleo. I didn't betray you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oro also tells her, by the way, there's no such thing as a bond breaker or else I would have used it already. And mm -hmm. yet she still goes after it with Celeste, not thinking maybe, maybe Celeste is actually not a good guy. Celeste gets poisoned. She's blinded by friendship. Celeste gets poisoned. By who? Well, Herself? she randomly accuses Azul of, and I'm like, who? Blue didn't do shit. <laughs> so just sitting there like... <laughs> I've known that guy for three minutes. He would never <laughs> do something like that. I'm over here minding my own fucking business. Exactly. By the way, he's the only black guy and the only gay guy. <laughs> You're going to accuse him? Mm hmm What has he been doing? Chilling. Exactly. Nothing. I don't even want to be here. He figured out an entire mail delivery service and he gets this. Shame. Isla does in fact figure out that the... Uh, Everyone else is white. <laughs> yeah. Isla figures out that the heart of the island is a yoki thing. It's an egg, as we established, because mm -hmm. a bird kept showing up. One egg is 40, right? Because <laughs> a bird kept showing up like Iago, except it didn't talk. She finds the heart. She gets shot through her own heart. Grim portals her away. Then her and Celeste, when she wakes up, they... He has portals? Yeah, he has portals. He has a bubble wand? No, he just has the ability to portal. Her and Celeste go and find the bond breaker, but Celeste is not Celeste. Celeste is the bad guy, Aurora, who's been alive.
alive for just as long as Oro and Grimdark, and she's been in disguise, and she did the original curse. She took off her glasses. <laughs> she's like, like fuck! Fuck. She's like a fucking Scooby-Doo villain. Thought and I would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for you. I can see this playing out. Meddling movie. kids and she your like, yokey things. She, like, pull, puts her hair down, yeah. takes the glasses off, they're like, <gasps> Oh my, oh my god. god, I never would have known. The bond breaker is not a bond breaker. Mm -hmm. Oro was right. She should have listened to him being that he's her mentor. I mean, he's his a possible traitor. boyfriend. He's a traitor. So Celeste uses the bond breaker to steal all of Isla's powers because she does actually have powers. They were tampered down. Dormant? And, and dormant, yeah. Oro and Grimdark show up and it's at this point I find out that Oro was not her stand-in father figure and was actually a love interest. And I was shocked. I was. How did you find out right there what happened? Because he's like, she's like, oh, you're in love with both of them. And I'm like, she's in love with her dad? <laughs> the chemistry between them never existed, so I was fucking flabbergasted. Yeah. Uh, Celeste steals all of Isla's powers, which were dampened. And apparently this happened because her mom was a wildling, but her dad was a nightshade. Oh, shit. Plot twist. So one power dampened the other. And it turns out Celeste got her caretakers to kill her parents. Mm. So Celeste said, this whole thing up and grimdark knew isla the whole so the time caretakers were in on it too kind of but not really um but i mean they killed the parents yeah you just said. yeah but not like maliciously oh just some mild poison or something <laughs> yeah so grimdark knew isla the whole time but erased her memories because the plan was that she would go in not knowing him i don't remember why grimdark and oro are both in love with her and apparently she's in love with oro if you love somebody then you can like channel their power too so she can channel his his power now. Isla and Celeste fight. She uses the bond breaker to get everybody's powers back and then Grimm uh, leaves in the end and goes back to Nightshade because Isla's mad at him about something and Oro and Isla are together. The end. I mean that's not a terrible ending considering. Oh Celeste died so the curse broke. That's all that had to happen. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of dumb. <laughs> I'm saying the, the, the scene itself, it seems, it seems kind of cool. I mean, it would have been cooler if I had known that that dude was it's a the, love interest. The power of love. I so mean, they're, they're, they're all, they all die though, right? Because she loves them. I, she well, just takes their powers. The, well, the curse is broken now, so uh -huh. nobody has to die anymore. But it says that like Grimdark knows about something that is like worse that's coming. Oro hints at that and that's where the sequel is going. I mean, I would be pretty fucking mad at him too if he wiped my memory. Yeah. That's no, valid. He keeps sending her memories of them fucking, and he's like, you'll come back, you'll be back. <laughs> Which is, you know, silly. <laughs> and obviously that's you Remember be... this time? Mm -hmm. He'll be back. <laughs> She'll be back. I don't know why she left. Staring at the door like, <laughs> she's still not back. <laughs> he gets a phone call. Isla? Oh. <laughs> Thought you were Isla. Not that I care. Knocks, somebody knocks on the door, he runs up. <laughs> oh, it's just you, mailman. <laughs> Azul. <laughs> Damn it, Azul! <laughs> oh, I'm so tired of you. So Azul, he, 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 he had a husband who died, of course, and like there's this moment. Surprised they didn't make him the bad guy. So there's this moment at the end where he like gets to see the ghost of his dead husband. That's like the most character development he had. It was really sad. So that was Light Lark. Sweet. I'm fucking mad. <laughs> It's really Is it really that dumb? It's like, really stupid. That's I, why I everybody like makes need, fun of I it. I need to read it just so I can be a part of your little inside joke. Well, that's why everybody makes fun of it because it's so stupid. And it's going to be a fucking movie. Allegedly. That's what she... Her entire TikTok is just her saying, I wrote Light Lark and I sold the movie rights and I... Who, did, who bought the movie rights? The people who made Twilight. I mean, it makes sense. I just... I mean, those are funny bad though. I don't see a way that Light Lark can be funny bad because it's just stupid. Like, unless they dude imprinted on an unborn baby <laughs> that was that so was funny <laughs> remember when we would turn it off and make up our own dialogue <laughs> god that's fun it's the best way to watch twilight Wait, can you erase my memory in the past like an hour <laughs> <laughs> i i will i'll uh i'll grimdark you it's really that bad it's really that bad it's really stupid like it's just really stupid like i know you're explaining it but i was getting so lost i was so confused it's 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 more stupid i mean like fourth wing is 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 silly and like a lot of at it's least like, i understood what was going on when you were explaining it it's pretty easy to like explain. i was so confused i couldn't even ask questions <laughs> it's it's just stupid like everything it's really like she wrote what happened to the egg <laughs> I don't know. So the egg was pointless. Yes. Same as her bubble wand. The same as her bubble wand. Right. And that's that's Thanks. that's annoying. I'm out. 
All right. Well, that was Light Lark with Carlos. I will be reading Nightbane, which is the sequel in November. What? <laughs> You know, Light Lark is the most viewed thing on my channel. And so, do people like it? Some or people allegedly lot of people... like it, but most people are in it to watch the nonsense. It doesn't make sense that this got any readership, really, mm. because it's so nonsensical. It's about to be a fucking... Allegedly. If yes, this but... shit gets created before Ember in the Ashes becomes a thing... I will riot. I will be so mad. I'm going to be outside with copies of Ember in the Ashes <laughs> giving it to people at the theater. This is a better story. I would a little bit let Karis Venturia step on me. A yeah, little for bit. sure. So that's it. That was Light Lark. Carlos's hour is up. Let me know what else I should explain to him. Maybe something that's a little more sensical, sensible. Or good. <laughs> or something Just... good. Just something good. He has so many questions. He doesn't even know where to begin. I, I don't have questions. I'm just confused. <laughs> what happened to the egg? There was no point to the egg. It's just gonna be like a fade to black and the egg is gonna be like spinning. <laughs> I don't know what the point of the star stick was. If we're not going to use it, I don't know what. You could literally you could teleport the egg and then at least it had a point. <laughs> teleport it right into a frying pan and then at least we'd have lunch. We're hungry. <laughs> we're so hungry. All right, I'm going to go Kinda get some like now. Kind of like she was when she wrote it. Kind of like she... <laughs> the crumbling pastry. Bitch, just go get a snack. Just go get a snack. You clearly are hungry. Your descriptions don't make any sense. And the editor, like I can't imagine being the editor and be like, yes, yes, the ocean was soup. You're right. Egg drop soup. <laughs> I can't. I don't understand. But yeah, it's getting a sequel. It's gonna be a whole trilogy. Cool. Hope it does well. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Hello, it's me, Trash Can Rachel. And real quick, uh, before I say thank you to my Therapy Bills patrons, I want to say that if you want to, you'll notice that at the beginning of this video, there was a reviews are for readers, little art. Um, I'm doing this new thing where people can send in like an art or a jingle or whatever and I'll put it at the beginning of the video and I will credit you and today's was done by Fuka so thank you to Fuka. Um, if you want to you can send in one I just thought it would be like a fun community thing to do. Um, well actually somebody gave me the idea in the comments which I thought was really fun. So if you're interested you can email it to me. I'm readswithrachel at gmail.com. Okay? Okay. So now I have to say thank you for being a friend to my therapy both patrons and those are Alexander, Ali Magpie, Amanda M, Bubble T, Kimmy, Chris Lair, DJ Rocktopus, Emperor's New Blues, Aaron, Eric, Faror, Harley, Jack and Jill, John E, Kelly No K, let me know if I'm saying that wrong, Casey McKenzie, Kate W, Caitlin, Kelly K, Quinn, Lady Kittybug, Lex, Alice, Peggy Lou, Rain, Reese, Samar, Scarlet, Shiny, SMK. Thank you all so much for being a friend. And before I go off to say thank you for being a friend to my Potato Starch Marxist patrons, and those are AM Angel, Alicia, Amanda, Andy, Angelica, Anita, Artie the Ninth, Ashley, Ava, BB, Beck, Blythe, Bookish Brain Rot, Ray, Bree, Brian, Caitlin, Carlin, Catherine, Kathy, Chris, CJ, Cole, Colleen, Corwin, Corey, Darren, Deborah, Diet Goth, Dorotea, Ebby, Elise, Ember, Emily A, Emily L, Emma, Aaron, Hannah C, Hannah T, Harpy Kiro, Haley, Hello There Darling, Ilianaka, India Inks, JM Tennant, J is on Olympus, Jen H, Jen Michelle, Jennifer T, Jenny G, Jillian, Jess Pugsley, Kaylee, Kat, Katie, Katya, Kayala, Kendra, Kylie, Laughing Cat Dog, Laura, Lauren B, Library of Scars, Lisa B, Lou Siri, Luna Moth, Lustful Octopus, Martin, Marcella, Marquita, Maz, Malara, MK Books, Molly, James, Nat, Natalie, Never, Nicole G, Nicole R, Nyan Binary, Page E, Page P, Penny Chilling, Foxglove, Pixel Star, Stars, Puratheon, Rachel B, Rat Sarah, Reba, Rebecca, Ren, Robin, Rosie, Rowan, Other Rowan, Sicoria, Samantha, Sarah, Sarah H, Sarah the Bear, Shamed, Shanae, Shannon, Shana, Sheena K, Sierra, Stephanie, Talia, Three Old Dogs, Tiana, Tina, Toast, Trash Can Teddy, Title Phoenix, Valentine, and Writer A. Thank you all so much for being a friend. Ooh.